Oh hi, it's Bukai, and welcome back to another video for Eidolon and our journeyman team. Now, we're getting close to getting our first journeyman, which is a very important milestone, as we kind of decided that i got to listen to the group of people that are saying to get the journeyman team up and running and let each journeyman do its own journey. I know that there's some people that are going to be disappointed in that because considering they wanted to go all the way up to a font, but it's one of those. It just felt so samey as the actual, well, as the regular solo challenge is and what's not, especially because considering the solo challenge isn't even at a font yet himself and getting the journeyman, even though the journeyman should reach there faster, this is just opens up the content and opens it up because considering it does feel a little samey if you ask me and you can even see with the afk hours on there that i've been afking a lot on this actual account a lot of that's just because considering it's just a slow process to get your first journeyman up and i think that the best best way to do this is to get is to make every journeyman go on his own journey and gather his own peanuts, gather his own hot dogs, gather his own carry capacity. He can wear some hand-me-down gear, but I think that is the best way to do it. Um, the other thing that I'm also going to do is once the maestro comes in, I will make it so that way I cannot make any other... Well, I will be able to make some journeymen, but I won't be able to... I can't make a, another journeyman past, I would say, the first page until I get the first maestro. Uh, that way I can... It really depends on where the maestro is. Like, if I've got to kill a font, then, well, that just won't happen. Uh, but each maestro should go on his own journey as well. It's just par for the course, par for the course. Now, what I'm doing today inside of this video specifically is I'm actually increasing my carry capacity now the reason for this is because considering i want to be able to eventually build the bandage wraps as nice as the spear is the spear is great for when you're able to one shoot mobs you can cleave through them the journeyman's power comes from his actual double punch and so you want to have that fast speed and i don't know if anybody's ever tried to build the bandage wraps or whatnot yeah yeah it needs a lot a lot of materials to be equipped and whatnot so i do have the fun guys a so i do have the fun guys material like small material pouch that he gives which is a huge advantage now it's still not perfect and the next stage that I'm going to be going to is, and I'm just checking the gem shop here now because I want to see what I can do to unlock. And unfortunately, I need 300 gems about halfway there. And, you know, I haven't been that active. I haven't been doing the spike trap a day and whatnot and whatnot. But I will eventually get there. I will eventually get there. Now, I also decide that, you know, my survivability is not going to be that great for World 2 once I get into there, despite even when I get my, even though when I get my journeyman, uh, my damage just isn't there. So I've got to spend some of my unlocks in order to eventually unlock the tab 2 or the actual, you know, World 2 task board. And so to be able to do that, I need to unlock certain things. And so I look towards, I'm going to need my catching net because I need to get my gold helm. And I need to unlock my fishing rod. From here, I'm actually going through and looking. And I'm like, okay, so after that, I'm going to want to unlock these top three weapons. Because that's what's needed to unlock the World 2 task board. And I'm just siphoning through, seeing what I need, and whatnot. And, you know, I eventually settle on that's what the decision's going to be. Now, here, I invest into the goblet a couple times. This might seem like a mistake. However... It's just preparation for the later worlds where you want to have that up as high as you possibly can and eventually maxing it completely out. It's not the greatest for World 1. World 2, it's meh, but for World 3, it's absolutely mandatory to have that thing pounded up to 50 points out of 50 points. It's just, that's your survivability and it's needed. Other than that, it's just mob respawn rate. Now, I know I probably should have invested in the gem drop or the 
uh, maybe saved some of those points because this is a little bit of a solo right now until I beat Amarok to start unlocking my Amarok gear because considering that is going to be a nice power spike. And from here, the next stage is to start grinding up some new resources. Now, I'm going to be spending a decent chunk in this video basically just grinding and preparing because I did try to beat Amarok initially. And yeah, let's just say I didn't have the damage for Amarok and it did not go well at all. Well, I mean, it did. It was just a really, really long fight and just frustrating i think the laptop even died in it when i was trying to actually beat him because i'm able to out damage his healing totem to an extent i can destroy it and just slowly win by like 500 points on top or like 500 damage on top of his actual healing totem so it's just a matter of he kept spamming it and then spamming the shield and then spamming it and then spamming the shield so it was just a war of attrition and unfortunately he was not playing against me screwing up, he was playing against my laptop dying, and I did not expect him to go meta, and wow, like, I lost. I lost the meta game. No idea that was coming. Now again, I'm opening up the gem shop. There's not really much here. I'm just kind of siphoning to see what should be priority, what should be, like, what should I pick up, and again, just settle on, you know, the anvil's just... The anvil is just so important. It's tier one. It's absolutely mandatory to have that anvil. If you don't have the anvil, you're just way, way behind everyone else. It's kind of an example of it's a little bit of a pay to win. Or you can free to play your way to it eventually, but it's a little bit of a pay to win. Now, once I start grinding up enough spore caps, I'm very, very close at this point. It took a while. I decide to go back into the actual town. The reasoning for this is because considering I've, like I've been saying earlier, this has been a grinding video, and I'm trying to grind up to get my good old-fashioned, not the string bludgeon, but the other one, the sleek shank, that's the one. I need to get the actual sleek shank, as the sleek shank is a decent power spike, and you could get the tarantula necklace. On a journeyman, the tarantula necklace might, might be a little bit better, and now that I think about it, actually could have made reaching gold a little bit faster, but, you know, live and learn. Uh, the weapon power is just really, really good on the Sleek Shank, and I'll end up using it. I can always buy the Tarantula Necklace at any other point and, you know, pass it on to the other journeymans just to help, but grabbing the Sleek Shank, I think, is a bit more priority. Because at this point, I'm actually thinking, okay, I could probably beat Amarok with a beginner, and I decided to go back out to the Spore Caps and just grind and grind and grind, because you need a lot. It's times three of each mob on there, and there's a ton of, a ton of grinding in this video where I've just got to continue getting rid of these Spore Caps. Now, I do want to say a couple things on the idle, lack of idle on content for the last bit. Uh, a lot of it has to do with the fact of I was just not getting shinies at all for World 3, which slowed me down dramatically on my actual construction and a bunch of other, and a bunch of other pieces on there. So I wasn't able to actually advance as far into World 3 as others have. And I do plan to update all of my guides now that I'm starting to get shinies. I will update all of my guides slowly to using all the different World 3 mechanics and what's not and what's not. But if you guys have been enjoying this video, uh, don't hesitate to give it a like, a subscribe, uh, pass it on to your friends. If you would like to help support the channel, there's a link to a coffee shop down below. If you guys would like to help support the channel as well in another way and join our nice little community, there's a link to a good old-fashioned Discord down there where you can join our lovely community. And with that, take care, everyone.